In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can view, manage, and edit all your project's digital assets in one view using the Pages Docker and Multi-Page View. The ability to see all pages in a document simultaneously means that you don't have to click page tabs to navigate to other parts of your document. You can move objects across pages fluidly, compare designs side by side, and freely move pages around to arrange them as you wish. For this tutorial, I'm using the CorelDRAW March 2022 subscriber update version. This subscription exclusive update has a wealth of user inspired enhancements to frequently used design features and an updated Pages Docker with new tools. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. In this example, I have an eight page document. Pages are displayed in single page view with page tabs along the bottom. Right clicking on a page tab brings up options for renaming, inserting a page before or after, duplicating, deleting, and switching page orientation. These options and more are also available in the layout menu. I can also drag and drop page tabs to rearrange order. When viewing single pages, Moving or copying objects between pages requires a few steps. To move this design element from page 1, I have to cut it, display page 2, and paste it in. Multi-page view is available in the Pages Docker, which can be opened by choosing Window Dockers, or by clicking the plus tab in the list of open dockers. I can also start a document in multi-page view by choosing File New and switching the page view icon though I would still have to open the Pages Docker. In the Pages Docker, thumbnails of each page are listed in order. This is the default single page view, and clicking a page in the Docker displays that page in the workspace. At the bottom of this Docker, I can add a new page, which is placed after the currently selected page, or delete the selected page. The Options menu at the top of the Docker also has options to add a new page, insert one or more pages, duplicate the current page, and delete. I can also switch from list view to grid view, which is similar to page sorter view in previous versions, and adjust the thumbnail size. This docker is also searchable, which is handy if I have named pages or a long list of numbered pages. To display multiple pages in the workspace, I'll click the multi-page view icon, which displays all pages at once, zoomed to fit all pages. By default, the pages are listed in a four-column grid. If I drag and drop in the docker to change the page order, the page positioning in the grid updates as well. Clicking a page in the docker selects that page in the drawing window, and double-clicking on a page thumbnail will zoom to that page. If I zoom out to see all pages, and then return to single page view, the view zooms to the selected page. Returning to multi-page view, I'll click the multi-page view settings icon to change the number of columns, which changes the zoom again to include all pages. I can also change the spacing between pages, switch to vertical or horizontal layout, or click custom for a free form layout, which I'll discuss more a bit farther on. I'll go back to the grid layout with four columns. In all layouts, I can create and edit designs. To select a page in the workspace, I'll click its name, which highlights the page in blue. There is a context menu for page options, and I can interactively resize the selected page, which affects all pages. Dragging a corner resizes the page on two sides while keeping the content in its original position. To add equal margins on all sides, I can hold the Shift key while dragging a corner. Dragging a side stretches or narrows. By default, resizing affects all pages but I can switch to Current Page and resize just one page. Moving or copying objects between pages is also easy in multi-page view. I can switch the images on the front and back covers without needing to cut and paste. Multi-page view is handy for facing page documents as well. I'll choose Layout, Page Layout, and enable Facing Pages, starting on the right side. The Page tabs update to show spreads, or sets of two pages. In vertical view, I can see each set of facing pages as they would be printed, 
and a grid shows facing pages as well. If the first page is selected, or if any two-page spread is selected, and I add a new page, a new two-page spread is added. But if the last page is selected, adding a page completes the spread, and adding a second page adds a single back page. I can also return to a list of single pages in the Docker by clicking Options and turning off Show Spreads. This updates the page tabs as well. And because this is still a facing pages document, Moving pages will produce a warning, since objects across shared pages may be affected. I can still return to individual page display, or sets of facing pages in this case, by switching to single page view. In this example, I have three pages of different sizes. In multi-page view, I can see all three pages. And for more viewing flexibility, I'll switch to custom layout. This freeform, non-sequential layout is great for working with documents, in which different assets are placed on separate pages, for example, a set of marketing documents that includes a poster, business card, and flyer. In horizontal, vertical, and grid layouts, the pages have fixed positions, but in custom mode, I can grab a page by its page name and move it anywhere. Now in this condensed view, I can easily copy elements from page to page. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on multi-page view in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written copy of this tutorial.